Okay, so remember we're going to try and use slaps to begin with. It's actually a lot more realistic on a couple of levels than trying to pantomime punches, okay? So um, the hook punch is your most common. That's what we want to do. And without the glove on, you can feel that his defense wasn't optimal because his hand was too far off his head and the punch slid in through there. So it's important to close off that gap and be as tight as possible. That's something you may not be able to feel when you're wearing gloves because they do act as, as filler. So different kinds of training, you can use slaps, you can use MMA gloves later on, but actually be the highest level. Just be careful, they don't protect the, the hands as well, not to mention the guy's head. But when you're shelling up properly, punching or spiking, getting your hand spiked by the elbow is actually one of your major safety concerns. And with the lighter gloves on, there's a good chance you can injure your fingers if you're hitting low on the glove, okay? So I always recommend 16 ounce gloves when you're getting to a higher level. To begin with, we're going to slap. Okay, and he moves in. Now, I've got an underhook here if he blocks with his head, which is good. Now, be careful about, about that take down here, and I may be able to go here. Yeah, that's, what, that's why you should try and control this second hand. You know, remember what I talked about in the first series? By controlling me here, he's stopping both takedowns. Whether I'm punching at him or trying to go down like this, by controlling this sword, this arm, he's preventing both. That's what I'm talking about, having a simple operating theory that you don't need to change back and forth. Oh, is he taking me down? Oh, is he punching me? If he defends this, this sword, it's good. Now, from a, from a fighting point of view, I want to get my hand here. Okay, let's boom. Uh oh, it's down. And I can take him down from here. Okay. Back being straight is one of your most simplest concepts, whether you're in punching range, whether you're in grappling range, having your back straight is so important. Okay, so remember that. Whenever I go to put my head in, I do it from my legs, and then I come in. What you can do to help is to make sure you're looking up. Even though you're too close to see, you want to have your eyes looking up through the gut. Remember, your body is it's synergenic, it's all connected. So if I'm looking down with my eyes, even though my back is straight, my head wants to go where my eyes are looking and my spine wants to go where my head is looking. So little things like that really help your training. When I go in to have inside head, when I bend my legs, I look up. And even though I'm in here tight, grappling with the guy, I try to keep my eyes looking up so that my head and back naturally want to go straight. So anytime I'm, even though you can, can't tell if you can see this on camera, but now I'm looking at the ground here, now I'm looking up, it, it just slightly helps my body feel the angle it wants to be at, even though I can't see, that's the problem. You're gonna have to remind yourself to train. Okay, so get all the whole here. Sucker punch, sucker punch, sucker punch. Now again, at this point we end up square. Okay, have you seen the defense for Tie clinch, very simple. Your simplest one is put the arm right across and wedge him off. All right, that's done in MMA, it's done self-defense, it's really simple. So when a guy double ties me, try to get in here right away before he closes the gap. This is really simple. And from here, if I hit hard enough to, to break him off, that's the time that you might be able to throw a strike because he's moving backwards. But be careful to see that he's not completely unbalanced. He's gonna wind up more important to cover and control than to try and get in a strike when it becomes a battle of who gets there first. If he's six foot eight and 300 pounds, even if you hit him and he gets a half that shot, it can make a big difference. Okay, so again, the second punch, you have to put that behind your head. Remember, little things like this, the difference between eating that punch and having it slide off your arm. I don't have the glove on, so my hand easily can fit in that gap. That was good, I can feel the hand against the back of his, of his hand, my hand on his hand, which means you hit there, good. Now, I have to get the underhook, but he's blocking here. Should step inside there. Yeah. Be careful with your balance, right? That prevents the knee, which we're not throwing by. And again, everyone's worried about being kicked in the groin, kneed in the groin. It's not going to be much fun, but I've seen and I've used groin kicks in real fights. I've seen groin kicks all my life growing up fighting before we did, did uh, jujitsu, and I've never seen anybody drop by a groin kick. They hurt, they're a pain in the butt. The possibility of, of real injury to your testicles exists, but I've never seen it happen. And I've, I've only come across in a newspaper article, one guy had his testicle injured from a sucker kick from a girl, apparently. I haven't verified it, but it was reported in the newspapers. So remember, getting kicked in the groin is no fun. Statistically, it's not a fight ender. It's not even close. You hit a guy in the groin, you may just piss him off. He wants to kill you now, so it's put him on the ground. So understand realism versus fantasy. Okay. Oh, sucker punch. When you see you're stopping in the middle, you gotta make sure you get close and clinch. Yeah, that's it. Now he's tied up tight. So I can't knee him with this leg because he's inside. This one is, a, is the only sword that you can't control. Also, you're grabbing the cloth of my arm, which is fine if you're wearing something, but when you train, 
you know, a lot of the time don't train with pulling. So you get used to controlling this arm, put your fingers behind my triceps, so when I pull back, you can feel it, and he's more feeling where this is. This is really good for training. The trained guy will pummel inside. Okay, so you need to pummel inside. That's it, instead of trying to yank his arm off. On the streets, you're just gonna try to punch him. So again, if you lose contact, as soon hook me again. Remember the cobra hook? That's right. It's possible that he can yard his arm away, that's fine. The moment you lose contact, Exactly, go back to the starting point. Don't try to leave your arm out here and track where the punch is because number one, it's hard to track. Number two, you're gonna be um, very tempted to use your eyes to see, which is just natural to, to humans. We overemphasize our sense, our visual sense. So what'll happen is he'll tend to pull his head out of position to see where the punch is better. And you can see where this will lead to different problems. So when we're pummeling here, he hooks the inside, gets the cobra hook, which is good. If I ER this arm away, go back to here and let the arm make contact with him and re-hook. That's a lot easier. And this is very similar to how we defend punch when we're inside the guard. So you'll see the similarity. This kind of stand-up training is easier to do because you can do it outdoors. I wouldn't recommend on cement. We're just shooting here because it's easier for us to move, but doing it on turf, we train this way all the time in the summer. It's a lot of fun. And a lot of these concepts are going to be exactly how you're going to be defending in the guard. So you don't have to learn two sets of material. Unlike the stand-up techniques you do with the gi, they're much different than what you do on the ground. So again, I'm probably one of your most common tumbles. Yeah, see how you use the elbow now to lock that off? That's the purpose of the cobra block. You can control his bicep and you can control his elbow here. That's it, boom, good. Now, if he, if he knows what he's doing and he yards off and he hits you in the head, yeah, you can go under him like that. That's good, that's it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah, baby, that's how we do it. Okay, now what I was saying here about, about this block, just be careful. He's got us what to do, can we overhook? If I go like this and he's blocking, which is good. If he knows what he's doing, just be careful because he'll use this as a fake and then he'll go under for an underhook. I mean, he already has that, keep it happy there. So keep your elbow, you know, if he's punching at me, I'm gonna aim it down his bicep. Try to, try to be careful like this. Unless he's really throwing an overhand or something, right? But it can happen. Okay, uh oh, looks like I've been inside. And the inside hip here. Oh. I should really go to the side to finish the katagatami, but we're on cement here, so it's more comfortable for me to stay on top. <laughs> so just a theme that we were working on earlier, that once the head goes down, a series of things happens that sometimes happens too fast to realize why. But the snap down sets up a lot of things. Okay, so we talked about this. He's got inside head, which is good. He's got control of this arm. He's got inside hip, which is three of the swords on that side. All there is of these two left. So remember, this arm is important. Even by stopping him from hitting you, by grabbing the wrist or the bicep, you're also stopping him from trying to do a takedown. Now, a suit, for, for whatever reason, this one is loose, and he decides to go for the takedown. If you don't have time to stop it here, what is your next line of defense? It's your head. Remember that, yeah, so when I go like this, get your head lower than mine and push me back. He's not gonna be able to get that leg and step back a little bit, just be careful, don't step in him. But you see how I can't get past his head? This is really, really important. It's one of the main things that, that um, Jiu Jitsu, back when I started in the late 80s, early 90s, didn't understand head control, which is something we got from, from wrestling and MMA. It's really important. This, this alone makes it very difficult. So now I give up here, I go back to punch him, he blocks. Okay, so now he hooks up my arm. This is important. Now the only, sword that you can't directly control. The only point is this leg. So yes, in theory, you can start trying to pump, pump knees into you, but once again, real fighting is in theory. By controlling all four points and only leaving this one, as soon as I go to knee, he just unbalance me. Yeah, he just pushed me back down. So when I go to lift this knee up, he just has to push with his head or this shoulder this way, which forces my body this way and makes me want to put my, my leg back down. So later when you understand where your arms go, where your head goes, you just start adding the slaps and the knees and stuff. And the timing, you know, even if this knee's about to hit you and you, you defend it, it's not gonna hit with much power. 
So remember, you indirectly control this point. You can never control all five swords perfectly standing. But by controlling enough of them, you control his movement and balance sufficiently that it's going to be hard for him to get anything off. The main tool is this hand. Even if he doesn't control this hand, if his head is far enough here, it's going to be hard to get a proper shot in here. And if you put up a block, it's good. Okay? So what a trained guy is going to try to do is, is try to win these, these sword positions back. Do not try to hit you from here. All right? So again, if my weight's on here, it's hard to do, but then I go in and try to descend that one. Okay, now let's look at some basic throws. And once again, his head is preventing me from doing much. But if I had inside hip here, and I had inside head, then this underhook allows me to do the same kind of throws as we do in jiu-jitsu, but without the gi. I don't need the gi. I can keep it here, I can grab the hip, and you can pull them off balance and go to your same hip throws if you've been trained that way. Okay, that's when the first throw was caught. Generally in a jiu-jitsu curriculum that's that's um, structured properly where you're still doing your, your throwing techniques, your nagi waza, the first two that are taught are the hip throw and then the old sort of gary that we covered. They're useful because you need a forward and a back throw. Okay? So a hip throw is pretty simple. I need to control this arm. Okay, so by using my my five swords theory here, I'm set up for all kinds of takedowns. The most basic one is a hip throw. So once again, I can keep my hand here, or I can go to here. Uh, this is good here. Never try to get the guy's weight going forward. Do my back step, and I've got a classic hip throw if I want to do that one. Same idea with an uchi maka, which is more common. As I step into here, essentially I've just done a, uh, an uchi, uchi uh, this is a small hip throw, the ukigoshi, which can get this this leg up. So as I go here, boom, I can I can hard gosh that. So if you have good good judo throws, those are really common ones, and they're they're uh, they're not that hard to do, and they can be done from the same tie up position. So you've got your wrestling throws, you've got some submissions that we showed off there, and we have our jujitsu throws as well. They all can work off the same control theory. That's what makes it really valuable. So again, it's got a pummeling fan. Good, he's moving in. He's got the overhook. It's got the head control, get the inside hip. Yeah. 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 If you want to pick him up, you got to get under him. You got to turn and get your feet square. Now, the Uchimata we did before, Uchimata is the easiest one from here because all you got to do is pick his leg up. Now, kick my leg back. Yeah, that's what forces my head this way, and then I'm on one leg. So, if you're pushing on my shoulder, it's pretty easy to throw. Yeah, just keep twisting him. It's relatively easy from there. And if I'm pushing in hard, which I wasn't doing, I'm standing static. If I'm pushing hard, then he's going to go pretty well. All right, so that's how we can throw from here. Now, again, at this moment, look, he's stretched out. And your weight's on your back leg. That's what makes that throw happen. Or foot sweep. Actually, was a, they're good.